Hi there, it's Claire from Better Meal Times. If you're a parent who's struggling to feed a fussy eater under five, then you're in the right place. Depending on your child's behaviour, you might be finding it hard to keep your emotions in check at meal times. And today I'm going to talk a wee bit about how to get yourself calm in the moment. So my experience with this subject is that I'm generally very quick to react in the moment. I've got twin boys and I find it very challenging to respond to their behaviour when they were young. Particularly when they fought with each other, that was always the hardest one. So when I was young, I was unfortunately given a slap on the head if I said something that my parents thought was out of line and I was very conscious that I wanted to avoid doing that with my children or anything like that. But by the time they were five, I definitely got into the habit of shouting. And I wanted to change that. So there are two strategies that I've found useful with my children um, when they've pressed my buttons. And I learned how to use these through um, parenting courses that I went on with Francis at Edinburgh Parent Centre. I would definitely recommend that if you're in Edinburgh. Both of the strategies give you time to consider what's just happened and respond appropriately rather than give a gut reaction like shouting which can escalate things. And you can use these at any time, not just at meal times. So the first strategy is to pause and initially to say nothing might sound easy, but if you're used to a constant toing and froing with your child where you react very quickly, then it can be hard to press that pause button. And it's better to practice pausing in situations that are not as heated, so that when something does happen that really presses your buttons, then you can access, access that different response more easily. You're basically training your brain to respond differently. And if you find it difficult to pause, then you could use a holding phrase. So you could say, I need to think about what you just said, or I need to think about what just happened there. And that also helps create space for your child to understand that their behaviour may have been difficult to deal with or inappropriate towards you. So just as an example, I was reminded by the power of pausing when my twin boys were at primary school and they were aged about nine or ten. After school one day we had had a snack and I asked Sean to put his plate away in the dishwasher. So Sean's generally very compliant and does what he's asked to so I was really shocked when he just said no and I was so taken aback that I stood still and didn't say anything for a few seconds. So I did pause, although it wasn't intentional at the time. And before I did say something, Sean said, okay then, I'll, I'll do it, sorry mum. And he stood up and put his plate away. So the first strategy is to pause. And the second strategy is to walk away literally, and I would suggest this for situations where you really are struggling to respond positively. And in those cases, I would definitely use a holding phrase. So you could say, I need to think about what you said, or I need to think about what just happened before you walk away from the immediate situation. You don't need to leave the room, but you could get a glass of water, or do something else that is practical and involves you moving away from being face to face with your child in that moment. And in either case, whether you decide to pause or whether you walk away, you might find it helpful to count to five or count to 10 in your head so that you start to reduce those feelings of anger and shift more towards feeling calmer before you respond. So then when you are feeling calmer, Give yourself at least two options for what to do next. Think about the pros and cons of them before you decide what to do. So if you found that useful, then 
please recommend it to other parents and I look forward as ever to helping you all towards better real times. Thanks for watching and take care.